many, many years ago, the wife of one of my colleagues was doing what we used to do many years ago. She was actually going into a butcher's shop and she was buying the Sunday roast. Brought it home and at the weekend she was getting ready to, um, to prepare it and when she opened it up she found that she had a bundle of bones. And so my ministerial friend preached the next time on the text from David and Goliath, is your servant a dog? Last week I had a similar thing in, in many ways. We were going to buy a washing machine. We'd done all the things that you do. We'd looked for the cheapest price. We thought we'd found it. We went off to the shop to buy it. And then my daughter pulled from her pocket a phone and she said, but we can do better than that at this place. And of course the salesman then had to go to his manager and when we produced the goods, we got $33 taken off the price. I'm afraid I'm not very good at haggling, but I do know that many of us have done what we read about today in Jacob's story. We've tried to bargain with God. One of my first memories as a young boy was kneeling down, my, down beside my bed praying that my dog would get better. It had taken a bait and it was in the death's door and in fact it died. And that taught me two things. One is that prayers don't always get answered. And two was that you can't strike bargains. But as I thought about this, I remembered those two great theologians of whom some of you will have heard Dud and Pete, when Dud says to Pete, do you believe in God? He says, oh, I'm not sure. He said, sometimes when I've got a cold and I say to God, if you'll make me better by two o'clock next Tuesday, then I will believe in you. The trouble is if you get better before that, you can't tell whether God did it or you would have got better anyway. Well, we feel sometimes we might have to do something good to get God to answer our prayers. Do you remember the two soldiers in the First World War who were sitting in a foxhole while the shells landed around them and one said to his mates, can you sing us a hymn? And his mate said, I don't know any hymns. He said, could you say us a prayer? Sorry, I don't know any prayers. Could you say something from the Bible? Sorry, I don't know anything from the Bible. So he took off his tin hat and handed it to his mate and said, we better do something religious. Let's take up an offering. If you read the uh, chapters before our reading this morning, you'll come across Abraham trying to strike a bargain. bargain. Sodom and Gora are going to be destroyed and Abraham pleads with God, look, what if there were 50 decent people in Sodom or Gomorrah? Will you spare the city? Yes, I'll spare it for 50. Well, what about for 45? Or 40? Or 30? Gets it down to 10. Trying to bargain with God. Now it's interesting that as the religion developed, the Jewish nation developed this idea of the doctrine of vicarious merit. So if some really good man did lots of good things, you could take some of his goodness and he'd lose some of his, but you could take some of his goodness and it would be attributed to you. Well, there are two ways of living. You may try to drive a bargain with life, 
or you can give yourself to life freely, asking nothing in return. Face to face with life, we can ask one of two questions. What can I get out of life and what can I put into it? It's interesting that even the disciples weren't beyond this. Peter once said to Jesus, we have left everything and followed you. What it's going to be worth for us? What's in it for us? And Jesus says that a life that is really worthwhile cannot be lived as though the world were a marketplace where we are to haggle about the price and drive a bargain. You don't invite someone to dinner hoping that you'll get invited back to their place, says Jesus. You can trade your soul in exchange for the world. But what does it profit you? There's a rather staggering verse in one of the Psalms where the writer is talking about the history of the nation and how it's gone on from strength to strength or sometimes from weakness to weakness. And then there's this verse, he gave them their request, but he sent leanness into their souls. And contrast that with David Livingston, the great missionary saying, don't talk to me about sacrifice. I never made a sacrifice in my life. Or Albert's fights or as he sailed back to his own country for a break and as he stood on the deck of the ship he said I feel myself humbled and ask myself how I earned the privilege of carrying on such a work. As an exercise I suggest you go home today and read the book of Job. It's just great literature if nothing else. But in that Job, a rich man, a prosperous man, and the tempter comes to God and says, Job serves you because of what he gets out of it. Does Job serve you for nothing? And then there is the, he loses his money, he loses his family, he loses his possessions. And through all of that, he, he stays loyal and he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. God will never bargain with us. God doesn't deal with us that if we behave ourselves, we shall escape the pain and loss which come to others. If God made such contracts, life would be poorer and goodness would be no more than the premium on an insurance policy. But of course, God will not make bargains with people like us. People who may feel that we are not worthy. As I read through this during the week, it suddenly came to me that in one of the most well-known stories of all, the story of the prodigal son, the son tries to make a bargain. He's down in the far country. He's eating the, pig, the food that they feed to the pigs. And as he thinks about it, he says, how many of my father's servants have got enough food to eat and they prosper. This is what I'll do, I'll make a bargain. I'll go back to dad and I'll say, dad, I've sinned, just make me one of your hired servants. And what does the father do? He says, well, come and see me tomorrow and we'll talk it out and I'll see whether you're worthwhile. No. The father runs to meet his son, throws his arms around him, welcomes him back, puts on a feast. 
And this is the way that God accepts us. Last week I had lunch with a good friend of mine and we were discussing theology, which is most unusual because he's a minister too. And um, we were trying to work out who could give the shortest answer to what they believed. And I said to him, well, mine are four words. I believe that the gospel says you matter and you belong. And he said, well, mine are two stories. One is the parable of the Good Samaritan and the other is the parable of the prodigal son. Not bargaining, not saying if I do that, you will do this for me, but a God who welcomes us and says this, my child, was lost and is found. Amen.